Coming up, a new chief of police takes office right here in Valdosta. And the effects of the flooding are still hitting close to home. Your news Valdosta starts now. Welcome to News About Asta. I'm Marlon Contreras. And I'm Jocelyn Dennis. This week, Brian Childress was announced as the new Chief of Police for the Valdosta Police Department. He has been with the department since 2001. Childress was one of 45 applicants to apply for the position. City Manager Larry Hansen says the city conducted a search to find the most professional candidates that could lead the police department into a successful future. Childress says he is eager to get started as the new Chief of Police. But also, school's new superintendent is on the job earlier than expected. This past Monday, the Valdosta Board of Education was surprised as current superintendent Bill Kaysen suddenly retired. Kaysen was supposed to serve a few more months, but he said he was stepping down because having two bosses run the schools was becoming confusing. Dr. Marty Rush has already been hired to become the next superintendent, but he didn't expect to assume the position until the end of the school year. In other local education news, Lowndes County Schools are opening registration for pre-K classes. Parents have until tomorrow at 2 p.m. to register any child that will turn four years of age on or before September 1st. If your child will be five before that date, they will have to be registered for kindergarten. Kindergarten registration begins on March 4th. Parents should go online to Lowndes County Board of Education website and print out the required registration packet, fill it out prior to the arriving to the Board of Education office on Norman Drive. The rainfall of the last week in our area has become both inconvenient and dangerous for drivers in South Georgia. The majority of low points, rivers, and creeks in the county have reached their maximum capacity, putting Lowndes under flood warning until Sunday morning. News Valdosta's Caitlin Barker has more on the story. Valdosta has experienced quite a bit of rainfall over the last week, making driving conditions and daily routines unbearable for citizens. A flood warning is currently in effect for Lowndes County, Berrien County, and the Willacoochee River, which lies right above Valdosta on Skipper Bridge Road. The warning is estimated to last until this upcoming Sunday morning or until it is pronounced canceled. As you can see behind me, low points across the county are filled up to their capacity with runoff from the storms. The flooding heavily impacted Highway 122 East, as well as the backyards of Park Lane and Meadowbrook Drive. Even though the rain has ceased, flooding is still an issue. While the effects of a week of heavy rainfall will be felt for days to come, the citizens of Valdosta and Lowndes County can actually enjoy a day of sunshine. With News Valdosta, I'm Caitlin Barker. The rain in our area caused high flow conditions at the wastewater treatment plants. The high flow at the Withlacoochee Water Pollution Control Plant caused the loss of secondary solids since it's a plant effluent. The amount of suspended solids is greater than one and a half times allowed by the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Permit. The city is now having a new system designed that will reduce the effects of river flooding. The city of Adosta also plans to move the facility to a higher elevation to prevent future flooding. Coming up, an update on Trayvon Martin case. And a transgender child speaks a lawsuit in Colorado. Stay with us. You didn't give up on sex, don't give up on birth control either. There are more methods than you think. Find yours at bedsider.org. Get your Yes, I am. <laughs> no, 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 no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to ENERGY STAR light bulbs 
and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Welcome back to News with Austin. The Trayvon Martin case is set to be put in the hands of the jury. Martin's defense finally allowed the case to go on to jury. Martin's family has spent the past year fighting for verdict against their son's alleged killer, George Zimmerman. Early on in the case, Zimmerman was released on $150,000 bail, only to have it later revoked. The judge said Zimmerman misled the court about his financial situation from his defense fund. Parents of a Colorado first grader have filed a complaint with the Colorado Civil Rights Division after a school denied their transgender child. The six-year-old, who was born male, has been identifying himself as a girl since last year. He is being banned from using the girl's bathroom. The school says it took into account not only the child, but other students, parents, and the future impact the action would have. Attorney Kelly Dude says the child reaches puberty, some parents and students are likely to become uncomfortable. One of the child's lawyers says the school can use this as a lesson in friendship, respect, and basic fairness. Until the case is settled, the first grader is being homeschooled. Tomorrow marks the day that Pope Benedict steps down as the head of the Catholic Church. His surprise announcement has prompted the College of Cardinals to begin the search for a new pope. This week, Cardinal Keith O'Brien resigned and said he will not participate in that search. O'Brien was Britain's senior most Roman Catholic clerk. His announcement was triggered by rumors accusing O'Brien of behaving inappropriately with several priests. O'Brien denies those allegations but says he resigned so he wouldn't be a distraction at the Cardinals. While President Obama hit the road to warn of looming spending cuts this week, Republicans in Washington are fuming over the president's theatrics. They say the country would be better served if Obama instead worked with Congress to find a viable alternative. Senator Roy Blunt says the option now is for the president to work for a better way for the cuts to be achieved. While Obama has urged Republicans in Congress to compromise, he has not scheduled any meetings with them far this year. Taking a look at your local weather, today we'll see mostly cloudy skies and a high in the upper 60s, with winds reaching 10 miles per hour. Tonight, the temperature will drop to the low 40s. Tomorrow, expect sunny skies with winds reaching 16 miles per hour. Tomorrow night, expect a low in the low 40s. Coming up, Science Saturdays takes VSU by storm. And we'll have the details of the upcoming 48-hour film festival. Stay with us. spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? To be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back to News about Asta. I'm Marlon Contreras. And I'm Jocelyn Dennis. But Asta State Dining and Second Harvest Food Bank are partnering up with VSU to host its inaugural Feed the Need Fun Walk. The walk is from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. this Saturday at the Boston Middle School track. The goal is to fill 10 trucks. One truck provides 9,334 meals and costs $2,700 to fill. A donation of just $1 provides $8 worth of meals. Donation drop-off locations include Palm Dining, VSU Student Life Office, and VSU PE Complex. For more information, contact V-State Dining. 
March is Youth Art Month, and the Annette Howell Turner Center for the Arts is hosting a community-wide youth art exhibition. The grand opening was February 24th, and the work will remain on display at the center through March 24th. The 2013 Youth Art Month exhibits includes works from about 10 South Georgia and North Florida high schools and about 35 elementary and middle schools. This past Saturday, a biology expo opened VSU to local school children for hands-on learning. News with office Benjamin Skinder has more on the story. This past Saturday at the Bailey Science Center, VSU had its first Science Saturday of 2013. The theme for this event was biology, the diversity of life, where they had many exhibits, including ones with live reptiles like this little guy. The goal of the program is to promote science and engineering programs for um, students that are in the uh, area, in the community. This Science Saturday is basically biology, so what they have are some skulls they're showing to get students to be able to compare the different kinds of animals. Many of the live reptiles were donated for the event by the Grand Bay Education Center. Reptiles weren't the only live exhibits, however. There were also spiders, scorpions, and other many-legged creatures. Children and their families from local schools came from all over to expand their intellect, on our world's wildlife. We really enjoy the science day here at Valdosta State University. This is the second time we've brought our children and it's a, it's a great opportunity for the kids to have some hands-on learning activities. They really enjoy seeing the different exhibits that the college does and we're very thankful for the college for providing this opportunity for the children in our community. This Science Saturday was more hands-on in the fact that children were allowed to make DNA bracelets out of pipe cleaner and beads. As well, there's a place where they could dig for fossils and shark teeth take a seedling home, and many other activities. Two more Science Saturdays are coming up this March and April with a focus on physics, astronomy, and geosciences, as well as mathematics and computer science. With News of Aldosta, I'm Benjamin Skender. The deadline is signed up for the 4th Annual Government 101 class is coming up. Government 101 is put on by the City of Adasta to educate people on all the city departments, including municipal courts, engineering, and fire departments. The program will begin April 1st and take place every Monday for six weeks. Only 25 people will be selected for the class. The deadline to enter is March 8th. This Friday will mark the beginning of the VSU Theater's area's biannual 24-hour play festival. Actors, writers, and directors will team up to write, direct, and perform a 10-minute play from scratch in 24 hours. Although the actors may come from all backgrounds, the writers and directors come from the playwriting and directing classes currently taught by Professor Jackie Wheeler and Jimmy Biggerstaff. Beginning Saturday at 7 p.m., the actors will perform 10 10-minute plays free of charge in the Soyo Theater. This Friday, the VSU Mass Media Program will host its first 48-hour film festival. Students will team up with faculty to produce films between 4 and 7 minutes long. These films were shown at VSU's Langdale Hall Sunday evening at 7.30. The film screening is free and open to the public. Turn. Thanks for watching News Vidasta. I'm Jocelyn Dennis. And I'm Marlon Contreras. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.